This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. To introduce Federico, uh, he's a lecturer in ancient numismatics at the University of Salerno. Before joining the faculty at Salerno, he held a postdoc at the Italian Archaeological School in Athens. He's the author of two books and numerous articles on both Hellenistic and Roman Crete and on the production and circulation patterns of local coinages in Southern Italy with a special focus on Tyson, which is what we get to hear about today. And I'm so excited for it. Um, he has an ongoing cooperation on, di um, on digital projects with the Archaeological Museum of Pistum, the Museum of Naples, as well as the, um, uh, the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris and the Numismatic Museum in Athens and has also held many visiting scholarships and participated on archeological excavations. But I will be quiet and turn the floor over to Frederico. Thank you, thank you so much, Philip, and thank you so much for this uh, so generous presentation. And uh, I, I share my video, and in the meantime, I want to, to thank all the organizers, you, Lucia, and Oliver, for uh, your efforts in organizing this uh, so, so, so beautiful conference. I, just a second, okay, can you see my screen, right? Yes, Federico. Just a second, I check my, okay, it's fine. And so I can say that I feel really honored today to take uh, you to Pessum following Rick's coins. And uh, much has been already said about the, uh, the coinage of Pessum, but I believe that this is the right occasion to present uh, an update on this topic and uh, making coins talk. So uh, let's go to, to Pessum and bring you there. And uh, I will give you first the coordinates as because talking about Pestum means talking about um, city or looking the Tyrrhenian Sea, not far from Rome, it's, uh, this is the case, and it's just 300 kilometers or uh, 200 Roman miles from, uh, from Rome along the Via Pestina and the Via Popilia. And uh, Pestum leaves the events of Rome uh, in, uh, in its expansion and management of southern lands. There are many archeological evidence that allow us to understand the history of this uh, city and which has been investigated for over a century and uh, this is still the subject of ongoing investigation by several international uh, teams. We know uh, quite well the evidence of the Greek age and uh, sufficiently not, uh, not at all those of the Roman period and uh, while the, um, we know very little about medieval and modern uh, phases of the city when um, these are considered the views. It's a city with a long and documented history and of which we know some fixed points that we can, uh, we can uh, show. First, uh, just to summarize the foundation of the Greek city of Poseidonia then occupied uh, in the second moment by the Lucanians who changed the, the name, but in particular the institutions of the, of the institutional order of the city and they changed also the name, I say, as I said, to Pistum. And finally, uh, the, the city became a Roman colonial, a Roman city in 273 BC. But here comes the problems, we can say, because the city, uh, this is now called Pestum, it's at first a colony of Rome, and we have so many attestation on, on, on this, some documentation. And then uh, it's an unknown moment when uh, the city is transformed into a municipium, maybe around 88 BC. And then perhaps, but we are not sure about this point, into a colonial city. We know that in 71 AD, a new colony was deduced by uh, Andrew Vespasian. And then uh, its history continued on the Middle Ages. And when, what you can see here, like in, the, in dark green, this is the period that uh, is clearly the period that interests the Greek and therefore is the numismatic passion. So uh, Pesum represents an important case of a city 
whose history can be traced through coins and uh, it's not uh, so common. Perhaps in southern Italy, you can say that uh, this is the city with the longer monetary tradition. And therefore, for Riggs, it uh, represented a great occasion of, for his interest, and in particular concerning the period starting from the end of the first century BC, and at least until Augustus' monetary reform. However, uh, more widely, his interest reached up to the Tiberian age, uh, when the mint stops producing coins. This, the last coins are those during Tiberius. And it's a short but very complicated period, and as the coins shows. And clearly, coins were also a necessary tools for scholars to for understanding the dynamics of Roman colonies. And we can see that already from uh, the from Tudor's Momsen, uh, he had analyzed them to outline coins to outline the various local administrative organization of these uh, Roman colonies. And but still today, speaking of these coins, and I mean coins of the Roman age of Roman Pestum, means to relate to an essential reference book, and namely the publication of the proceedings of the um, of a conference held in Naples in 1971. It's quite strange because uh, it's 50 years ago, but still relevant today. This, collects, uh, this, uh, this book collects various papers and above all the uh, one paper of Michael Crawford concerning, and the title is clear, the form and functions of a subsidiary coinage. And this paper Crawford had uh, just for the first time tried to put uh, coins, the contradiction of Pestum, uh, the Republican Pestum in, uh, in a kind of order noting some uh, difficulties and asking some questions and questions that are still crucial today. First, uh, he, he was uh, thinking about if it was, what it was possible to reconstruct the chronology for uh, this coinage, but also what was the function of these small coins and by whom they were produced. And this is, we will see maybe the most interesting point. And these questions were prompted by the specificity of coins. And uh, let me give so two examples. The first one is a famous semis uh, with a minting saying on the rivers. The, the, the type would already be quite particular and unique in the panorama of the coinage of Rome and also Roman colonies, I can say. Even more so, uh, if linked to a complicated reverse legend that seems to indicate that they are produced with personal money of the praetor. So, uh, so that there are different uh, different ideas uh, still, still today about uh, the how to how to read this uh, SPDDSS legend. Um, maybe it's why right, the the proposal of Crawford in Sua Pecunia Dono Edit, and maybe the, the second one, the Senato Sentencia, the Double S, and but we will see that it's not so easy to read this coin. And but uh, coins are um, producing even these coins um, could allude also to a weight distribution because we see this a scale on the obverse. It's a scheme that appears to be perfect, but still leaves some doubts today. A second coin so is maybe. Uh, equally famous or more is that of Minea, a rich matrona from Pestum, who seems to be the one depicted of the ob on the obverse. The woman on coin, and this is also another unique case on this coinage, was uh, the wife of an important collaborator of Caesar, responsible, uh, the, uh, the, the husband. Uh, for the colonial deduction of the city of Apamea in Bithynia, and there was senator between uh, 46 and 47 BC. What is interesting here is the legend on the reverse, PSSC, formally read as Pecunia Sua Senatus Consultum. But this would mean that coins was paid by the matron matrona herself, and of course, with the authorization of local senatus. And also to say that here, the legend PSSC, this one, uh, 
has been read as a local corruption of Latin because the regular formula should be sua pecuna, not pecuna sua. But this also is a question that's still open today. And uh, this in past did not seem surprising, but this, this legend, because given the, 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 the same woman had distinguished herself in phenomena of awareness. I say, for example, about the so-called Basilica of Pessum, that is a building precisely uh, the same building represented on the obverse of the saints, built and decorated with sua pecunia, we know this from the descriptions and from the woman so herself, and right in the center of Pessum Forum, we can imagine which is the, uh, the idea that is uh, behind this, uh, this building in the middle of the forum, a very important symbol, as obviously also the coin R. And these two coins, the one with the minting scene and this one from Minea, make us understand uh, in which context we are moving. And, but in reality, the, 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 the situation is much more complex, I can say. And if we, if we observe the types chosen uh, for these coins, uh, he, we will see that buildings are depicted, but not, not, just, not just buildings, but also symbols related to games. And I mean, in particular, to Ludi Gladiatori or to Veneziones, because there are also swans on the reverse of coins. But we also have reference to local laws for the collecting of uh, taxes. And sometimes there are also depicted tools for everyday use, such as the Sigi and uh, Oinokoi. And also names of local magistrates and local personalities, public figures, and private citizens. This is an important topic. Uh, are also reported on coins. This, uh, this situation allowed to hypothesize, and I'm also referring to Crawford proposal, but also those of uh, Andrew Barnett and Renata Cantilena, uh, that there, there were coins with a very specific purpose. Its own context of production and distribution, as if they were a medium for something that should be called maybe as larcesiones or a kind of benemerencia, or maybe it's better to talk about evergasia. Uh, we are talking about three words that are not synonymous, but each has its own context of meaning. At first, coins were seen as a tool for making donations on occasion of games or uh, local events, but also as they were the recognition by the community or the local senators towards certain magistrates, or by private individuals towards citizens. Finally, the evergasia, that is the donation for propaganda purposes from individuals or other citizens, as in the case of uh, Minea, a women. And so to better understand context of production, distribution, and circulation of these coins, a survey of the specimen was carried out and is still going, I can say. So, identifying about uh, 1,600 coins between public and private collection. And as usual, the three main groups are those that come from the archaeological area of Pessum, the first two, and the Rick's collection. And all the, these three together represent almost half of the total. The coins of the Salusto collection, I should point about this, uh, this collection, because uh, uh, it's an historical collection with coins coming uh, mainly from the archaeological area of Pestum, which is why uh, we can consider the, this collection as a collection coins from uh, made of, coin, of coins from the territory like those of the Museum of Pestum. Um, this is why also the Museum of Pestum acquired these coins uh, with a donation. The number of museum coins, however, is a provisional number. And this number is destined to increase with the systematization of all the excavations and uh, with the ongoing researches. Instead, the uh, RICS coins are crucial to this analysis, mainly because they were the basis of a dialing study. Uh, this is thanks to their excellent conservation and variety, since we had collected rare and little known specimens. We can say that uh, 
the, of the 115 coins in Sens, uh, they were acquired between 1989 and 1997, and a few more in following years. And in addition, we had uh, also resolved those of other chronologies, I mean, like some Pestano coins and second century coins, coins, coins. And because of obviously they were not in his interest. Based on these numbers, it's possible to better analyze the coin production of uh, this, uh, this mint. And a first datum is uh, a quantitative datum one. And I mean, it is now clear that uh, the most production is made, of, is made up of sense, while about uh, 130 are just uh, tr the triants and few other quadrants and sextants. So the prevailing coinage, therefore, is that of the sense is totally clear now. Uh, uh, a second datum uh, is, that, uh, is that one of, uh, about the character of coins. What appears to be a chaotic organization is actually, or at least in part, recognizable, uh, at least in an outline. We are talking about coins produced mainly by magistrates such as Quatorvili or Guavili, but also occasionally by patrons and praetors. In case of celebratory assignments such as that of the Epulones and finally Flamines and Pontetius and perhaps also uh, private citizens. From information we have, especially from the epigraphic data, we can propose uh, an articulation of this uh, production over time by identifying uh, the period of activity of, uh, and considering also um, uh, it is possible to identify uh, when they were acting. And also considering that uh, the quattro really, um, maybe means the uh, um, a magistrates covered by two pairs of duovili. And so there are no major changes between uh, also the, I can say the, the Momsen idea about this disorganization. And to this slide, I should, add, should also add another uh, uh, rule. This is the pontifex, because we also have coins uh, minted by a pontifex that are no more by some quadrants. And so we have already uh, talked about coins of Linnea and various epigraphic station uh, we have about her, but other characters are also tested by inscription, as in the case of Quintus Scipius or also others. And we also know about other magistrates that uh, were not attested on coins that donated uh, to the city sumptuous games uh, with both wild or exotic animals or prisoners sentences to death, who wanted to engrave their names on stones, also writing the amount they spent to organize the game. So this is a kind of uh, local behavior of the magistrates. And same for donations of public works, such as fountains, buildings, and uh, the works for urban renovation. This practice had to, had to last for a long time, as at least 11 inscriptions reach up to early imperial, uh, imperial age. And is it, it is therefore possible to distribute uh, coins uh, on this uh, periodization. So this is a significant, significant datum that allows us to see uh, which and how long nominals uh, are minted as in the case uh, of the triants, sextants, and quadrants. And how the semis will be the most produced coins for a long time without stops. And, uh, the, the, uh, and also, the, the, this, also this, this is also confirmed by the number of detected dice that were used for this production. And this, this show a greater production intensity right in the period between the end of the Republican era and the beginning of the Russian one. Perhaps the most interesting point is, um, is made, is given for me at least by this graph and this uh, the reading of the weight standard in use in Preston. If we look at various emissions in the long run, there are some things that may seem really strange. In particular, I mean, regarding the, the semis, 
the adds of three and and three and sextants is a production that continues from before and uh, that uh, at a certain point ends probably because it's not longer necessary uh, in circulation for daily transaction and while the quadrants is only occasional and then we will see what is related to what is interesting is precisely the weight of the sense and it is uh, clear that at certain point this is constantly lowered in weight until it replaces the three ends. However, the minting of the semis continues with a long weight, uh, with a low weight to about three grams, and then goes up again for a weight of about four grams. I think maybe this is the effect of the Augustus reform. And uh, the Augustus monetary report of, on, uh, on local coinage. And what happened with the uh, triance is, uh, I can say, emblematic. And uh, um, Crawford, I have to say that Crawford has already noticed that some specimen, if, if I remember, he, told, he told up, talks about uh, six, six coins that were over uh, But uh, now I can say that after a review of these coins, it's evident that a greater number, or maybe all of them, are overstriking. It's therefore a question of a systematic overstriking, which uh, must have been organized with the withdrawal of what was previously in circulation. And it's clear that all strike replace a nominal at now. The trends now become a sense, so it's, it's a Clear and a, a unique fact that gives greater precise chronological information. To clarify that change in weight system, we should refer to a period later, or in any case, close to the promulgation of the Lex Cloud Sepatilia, probably in 89 BC by Marcus Plautius Silvanus and Gaius uh, Papirius Carbo to integrate the Lex Julia. At this juncture, the definition of the same usual standard was reached, which in fact also halved the values of the previous coins by converting the value of the three ends into the higher nominal, the semis. By reducing their weight, the state could have issued larger quantities of small coins of the same values as before, while continuing to use the same quantity of metal. In this way, we could favor the poorer classes who saw retail transaction facilitated, and also a precautionary, precautionary measure was implemented in anticipation of an outbreak that would be have been the bellum Italia. So we said about the quadrants. This is a particular and sporadic production. I dare say very strange. Uh, it's a production of just two issues, uh, the one produced by a Pontifex and uh, a Pontifex who produces coins is somewhat questioning, to say, and one with the symbol, symbols of the Swigil and the Reno coin. This precisely uh, for their value as a quadrant, they could have more the value of a token uh, for the entrance to the buff, just in the case of uh, the quadrants with the Reno coin. Um, and I can also add that uh, some buffs were uh, maybe the, the, the bigger. We were rebuilt in the Caesarian age, just in the middle of the forum, not far from the Basilica of Minea, and maybe by the same workers as the construction techniques is fully comparable. We know uh, that the admission price to the buffs was in fact acquired, and type seems to me to speak from themselves. We now come to two production peaks. The first is represented by an issue with a handshake on the reverse. And this coin must have been well known outside, uh, at least well known outside Pestum, or in communities of the same city outside, since it was also used as a model, as a model to be imitated. And this is not the place to, to talk about imitation, which Keith Sanger is the expert. But uh, it's uh, important to note the, produ the production peak that is uh, reached with this coin. And it's no coincidence that another of the production peak is uh, that reached by the coins of Minea. 
uh, these are these very interrogative coins are the most produced at all and were certainly minted after the age of Caesar because this matrona dedicated uh, the basilica to her sons after husband, uh, her husband's death as a means of presentation for her sons to the local society. Anyway, her portrait on the obverse uh, vaguely resembles uh, Lilia. And certainly the abundance of these coins made think that they were not produced by known or old women, but by her directly, therefore with her money. But even this case, just another suggestion that awaits to be confirmed. Instead, the coins of Augustus et Tiberius um, are clearly identifiable by the presence of the boost of the emperor on obverse even without legend. In this case, it's important to know the increasing way, and I believe certainly this is linked to the introduction of the Augustus monetary reform, for which the coins of Pessum had to adapt again to those produced to Rome after a while. We just know had again introduced small values. I refer in particular to the quadrants that were introduced by Augustus, and so far disappeared from circulation. And it's no coincidence that the nearby city of Velia also has a huge autonomous production of small coins. I mean, the coins with Athena tripod on the, the, on the right and the tripod on the reverse, which is a very huge production, which even if the legend is, writ is um, written in Greek alphabet, they are equivalent in ways to our Roman quadrants. And a last argument to be analyzed uh, is the, the context of the circulation of this uh, semesis of Pestum. An extraordinary and exemplary case comes from a hoard found in urban area during the excavation of the 90s. And this, uh, this, this hoard was published by Annalisa Polosa in Annali. Um, it was found in a late Republican domus uh, in a layer that was obliterated by the urban renewal works by the early Augustan age. There are missing coins of Minea in this case. This contains a bronze key, but also 26 Pestum coins. Uh, they are senses and a broken Roman ass. The halved coin is not accidental. Indeed, this is a snapshot of what must have circulated in the city at that time, together with Roman and local coins. And this data uh, is also confirmed by many other small, small prints of broken coins. So broken coins that are often associated with bronze coins of Pesto. This is the case, and just to give you another example, just to as a confirmation, um, but this is often repeated, of the finds from the so-called Giardino Romano, the Roman gardens, and uh, on the back of the Roman Forum, uh, from where another small hoard seems to come. This is this must be to be resolved. So, but I can I can see that it's composed of the um, pestum semis and uh, triantes, and it's a small hoard that uh, come um, with another cutted semis of Rome. So, uh, also by a survey of uh, associated coin finds. How the coins of Rome are quite often found together with coins of Pestum. And to be cut are generally the assets of Sexus Pompeii, but also ancient, coin, ancient coins, more rarely silver coins. And for this period, I can say that at least uh, 39 hard coins are known, I mean, uh, Republican coins. And other, others are yet to be identified because I know that in the uh, museum deposit, uh, there are more. And of course, there are others from the mid imperial age, like a second moment, but it's like a rather significant number for the late Republican age. And these are broken now for importers. Therefore, the broken coins circulate together with the coins of Pestum, while usually the finds of Republican bronze coins are not so common, at least in Pestum. Uh, to summarize, so uh, the problem that is facing Pestum is lack of small change of Rome. A lack it will last until the reform of Augustus, as we saw. 
And it seems that since the 80s, Rome did not have the problem of providing small change for daily transaction, at least out of the urban. The solution that were used at time are different. So the using of fractional coins, imitating the most widespread issues in circulation, autonomous community productions, and in the case of Pestum, the continuing to in product, in, in minting coins by exploiting the long tradition of minting that this city has, mis, has uh, must have been proud of. Therefore, it was not a benefit recognized by Rome uh, as was uh, proposed before. On the contrary, it was precisely the disinterest of Rome that must have caused this. And it therefore had to be resolved with a production managed by local magistrates, perhaps, but it's not sure, with support of, a, uh, of celebratory issues um, by private citizens, or issues that are being financed, and at least uh, some of them, by tax revenues. And so, uh, and with this, I conclude, I finish my journey, thanks to Rick's coins. Uh, this allowed to contextualize a coinage that overcome the lack of small change. So we're talking about regular but fast minting, which follows the change of types according to the events, local events in particular, sometimes produced by magistrates, others by other official positions, but sometimes also by private citizens whose role they must have in order to be mentioned on coins. However, it's a production that did not have to go far beyond the city limit, uh, the city limit, given that uh, sporadic attestation are just recorded from the nearby cities, such as in the case of Pompeii, where we have a, a hoard, but very few pressing coins, uh, if we compare with the numbers that we have about our other issues. From Vela, where the, we just have a few coins of, of, of Pestum, uh, and uh, I mean also internal areas like Salerno and other areas. So, thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I, uh, I, Again, I've learned so much. Um, I invite questions from either panelists or uh, from the audience. Uh, while you are all generating those questions before our final coffee break, I'm more really curious about the striking by religious officials, the Flones, the Flatmanes, the Pontificates. Um, could you talk a little bit more about those, Frederico? Oh, yes, yes. I have to say that um, uh, also following what was said yesterday about Koch and also with Susan Fekoper about uh, which was the, the role of the magistrates. And I have to point in this case that uh, I, I wish I uh, should again the coins of Mine. I, maybe uh, it's, I will come back here. And so. Um, we, we should point about which is the role of the senators, I think. Uh, because talking about magistrates in the case of Pestum is quite a mess, but it's possible, of course, to, to have more data. But um, in this case, uh, uh, which is the role of the senators? Because uh, old coins are, um, uh, auto, um, are at least, uh, um, they have the provision of the senators, the local senators, I mean, not the Roman senators as it was uh, taught before. And also, I, another thing that I can add is that I don't believe that uh, we can uh, read the, the legend P.S. like Pecunia Sua, and uh, like it's a, a, local, uh, a local corruption. And uh, also because uh, I show you a coin of Augustus that I have here. Uh, I just had it a few minutes ago, this one. I share again my screen. This is a coin in the Mune's cabinet of Berlin, where it's very clear to read that uh, it's pi s. So it's not possible to talk about uh, pecunia sua. It's clear, maybe it's more appropriate to talk about a pessanorum semis or something that is, uh, is linked to pestum. 
and uh, so we should uh, reduce maybe the role of the own money to produce uh, coins from private citizens and maybe all these ps that we have on you know, many coins they really they are not pecuna sua but uh, when we have sps so pecuna is right but i think that the majority of those coins are produced by the, the local senators or at least they are they are um, appropriated by the senators and then uh, magistrates or privates or maybe also others can produce coins but it's quite incredible to, to think that uh, so big production is not uh, ruled by the city. Yes, yes I agree. Um, Lucia had a question. Oh, so Clive has a question. Go ahead, Clive. Hey, Clive, I cannot hear you. Thank you. You asked me if I wanted to comment. And firstly, to congratulate Federico, with whom I've had the pleasure of working before. Um, the, the one thing I'd like to say, and I think it's quite useful for those who are looking at Roman uh, era coinage in Italy, is that Italy divides into different um, zones. You have Rome and Umbria, which is one area in which Roman coins circulate. You have Campania, which I'm going to be describing now. And then you have this old Greek area of Pestum and Velia, which is separate and carries on traditions that are not found anywhere else in, in Italy. And then, of course, as uh, you heard from Suzanne yesterday, you have uh, Sicily. So uh, it's important to keep in one's mind the fact that these are not actually coordinating baskets. They, they don't bleed into each other. They're separate. And the Pestum coinage is the example of a city that keeps striking and keeps striking. And as Federico says, you have the same thing in Velia, but it basically shows that the economy, the monetary economy of Italy in the right down to the time of Tiberius was segmented into these different circulating areas with different traditions. But anyway, Federico, congratulations. I thought that was a very nice paper. Thank you, thank you, Oliver. Uh, I, I, I want to, to, to add something on this topic because uh, I think that uh, it can be helpful. Um, so, uh, Vela and Pesum they are very close. It's about uh, 60 kilometers. And uh, so, they are really close. And uh, they also share uh, in, uh, some, uh, some events, some stories. And uh, from Vela, we have a very huge amount of coins from the excavations. We talk about um, 20,000 coins. And it's quite surprising that we just have 12 coins of Pestum there. So it's nothing. Yeah. And uh, it's sure that you're right, uh, totally right. And uh, it's quite impressive how uh, these coins, they, they remain in the place where they are minted. So they are not for the outside circulation. Another interesting thing, and this is from my work in excavations in Pompeii with the Spanish school. Uh, I've sat there as they come out of the earth. The Minea coin is common in, Pes in uh, Pompeii. That one issue turns up in quite large numbers in excavations in Pompeii. And I've often wondered whether a block of them was not taken there. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. That's fascinating. And um, we have a question from uh, Mariangela Inglese. Would you like to... Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, so um, I want to, uh, first of all, uh, uh, thank uh, Federico for this uh, very uh, well articulated and rich presentation. Uh, and of course, I take for granted uh, my thanks to the organizers uh, uh, of this uh, event uh, honoring uh, Rick. Um, and uh, I have uh, uh, a question um, pushing you, Federico, to the Tiberian uh, age, um, because uh, I I found uh, um, a, a coin of Pestum in uh, our excavations uh, in uh, Blanda Iulia. It's uh, 
Tortora, modern Tortora in uh, northern uh, Cyrenian uh, Calabria, uh, modern Calabria, it's uh, ancient uh, Lucania. Um, so I found uh, a, a semis. Um, of uh, Tiberian times, uh, RPC 604. Um, and uh, uh, in, of course, I think it's, uh, it's an important find. You, you uh, mentioned uh, that the uh, um, circulation of uh, coins uh, struck by Pestum is uh, um, quite local. Uh, but this presence, uh, I think, can be uh, deserves to be um, to be studied, uh, analyzed more, uh, because it may testify um, um, also uh, um, a, a privileged uh, relationship between Pestum and this area. Uh, also, because uh, uh, we found also um, stamped tiles. Um, harking back to um, uh, um, uh, the end of uh, the Republic uh, in the name of uh, Postumus Curtius, who was uh, also a, a wine producer from Pestum. Um, so uh, we think that um, there could have been a, a special relationship uh, between Pestum and this area. So uh, my question is about uh, coin circulation outside Pestum in that period. That's your answer. That. So I, 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 I will answer. And uh, thank you so much you know, also for this information about this coin. And um, I can say that uh, is something is changed with the uh, coins of Augustus and Tiberius because I think that they fit again the Roman system. So they can be accepted outside of Pestum without any problem. And that's why maybe there are a few coins more of Pestum outside uh, Pestum. I mean that uh, a few of them uh, have been found in, um, in Pompeii. And I know one in the area of uh, Palinuro, in the, so in, the, in full Lucani, you can, you can see. And uh, also maybe one in, uh, in Tuscany was found, one coin of Tiberius also. So I think, but it's not sure because we have just few coins, but uh, just because they are again in Roman system, so they can be exchanged, they can be used with, uh, with uh, the same value of Roman quadrants or not as Roman semis or Roman semis maybe later. But uh, I think this is the, um, this is the point. And that's why, uh, for example, um, Clay was talking about Pompeii before. It's quite interesting to see that uh, in Pompeii there is a, a hoard of uh, peasant coins of Minera and uh, that I presented in Taormina. So talking with Mariangela. And uh, it's quite interesting because uh, this, this hoard was preserved for uh, at least the destruction of Pompeii without being used in an archive. So the, the owner of these coins uh, keeps this uh, group of uh, 45 coins without using them for a long period in Arca, while coins of Augustus and Tiberius made of Pestum were uh, circulating without any problems. So I don't know if this is a problem in the way standard. That's why I was uh, wondering about, uh, uh, it was better to point out on this weight uh, organization because maybe we can have more data from uh, from this and I, I i hope to have time to to go to go deeper on this okay thank you thank you for it was amazing thank you thank you for watching the american numismatic society's youtube channel don't forget to subscribe and if you like our online resources publication and events you can support the society by becoming a member and don't forget to check out our book and ebay stores the links are below